This is an updated video about my dino swap farming strategy. Long story short, I am up but I'm also down. If you'd like to understand where my strategy is at the moment and also what I think about the overall health of the dino swap exchange, then please keep watching this video till the very end. One week ago, I shared with you my dino swap strategy. Well, actually, I was comparing two strategies, so definitely check this video out. So, last week when I shared that video, we had a winner. The winner was a very slim winner, and that was using the Dinoswap farm and the Dino pool. However, I have to report to you today that that strategy is actually losing, and it's losing majority because of the price of the Dino token. Yeah, so the price of Dino when I first did it was around $3.97, so it was quite high. And now the price of Dino is like $1.44. So definitely the price movement has made it so that the strategy where I am collecting more Dino tokens would definitely be the losing strategy because the price of Dino continues to decrease. So if I am farming with the Dino USDC farm, I'm collecting Dino as a reward. This Dino token is decreasing in price. I then take that Dino token, I deposit it into this pool, which obviously is giving me a yield as well, but the Dino token is decreasing in price. So therefore the yield does not compare to the yield I get with auto compounding because with auto compounding, technically I'm still preserving some of my value because of the USDC pair. So that is a major reason why strategy A is losing when compared to strategy B. So if I could just show you the quick math, when I first started out, I had 265 tokens in the Dino farm, which is this one here. I then, this is worth in US dollars, sorry. Then I had 24 Dino tokens inside of the Jurassic pool. That's here. And then in the beefy finance farm, I had 26748 in here. So that's the USDC value at the time, or the USD value at the time, sorry. Now, <laughs> in DinoSwap, my farm is now 164.8. My pool now has 37.252, and the beefy farm is worth 195.52. Currently, the price of Dino is $1.42. All right, so with all of that details plugged in, we can see that the Jurassic farm, I mean the Jurassic pool plus the Dino USDC farm is losing me more money than the beefy finance pool. This shows that I'm actually down. I am down in both scenarios. So let's just discuss that for a bit. So when I first started in the pool, the price of Dino was much higher. So what I'm experiencing is the price of the Dino token actually decreasing in price. So because of the price of the Dino token decreases in price, the amount of Dino tokens that I added to my liquidity pool obviously is worth less. However, another thing that's happening right now is impermanent loss. I am experiencing impermanent loss. It's called impermanent loss because technically the loss is impermanent until you withdraw your liquidity. However, it can become permanent if the price never goes back up. So it's impermanent until you know it's time to decide so let's try to understand impermanent loss so there is a really nice impermanent loss calculator which you can use to understand it a bit so when i first started with dino the price was 324 and i did it with usdc so let's just say it's a dollar right now the price of dino is 1.42 so the impermanent loss i experienced is 7.94 However, the gotcha with impermanent loss that I think people miss a bit is that this is comparing the price of the tokens if held versus the price of the tokens when you provide liquidity. If you hold the Dino token, you still lose value. So if you originally invested $1,000, according to this example, you would now have $719. But because you provided liquidity due to impermanent loss and your assets reshuffling because of people buying and selling the asset, your value of the tokens that you now hold is worth $662 because when you provide liquidity, when people are, are selling Dino tokens, there are more Dino tokens in circulation. So therefore your pool will now have more Dino tokens and the price of these Dino tokens have dropped. So if we go back here to my sheets, we can see both in the beefy Dino USDC scenario compared to the Jurassic pool scenario, I am still losing. But when I started this video, I told you I am both up and down. So how am I possibly up? Well, this is where the rewards come in. And this is why providing liquidity is still an attractive thing to do. Let's say I provided 
$500 to provide liquidity. $250 would have been spent on USDC and the other $250 would have been spent on buying Dino tokens. The price at that time was $324. I would have had 77 Dino and 250 USDC. This is actually true. I did start this pool with $500 and I did actually buy at this price, even though it was like the day it launched or something. If I was not farming and I just simply held these Dino tokens, then when the price right now, based on the price of $142, would be $359. So I've definitely lost because the price of the Dino token went down. If the price of Dino was higher, let's say it was $397, like it was, you know, just last week, then obviously I would have made a gain. Now, let's say I decided, you know what, I'm not going to sit on these tokens. I'm going to do good and I'm going to provide liquidity to the Dino Swap Exchange. Well, because I'm providing liquidity to the Dino Swap Exchange, I receive a reward in the form of Dino tokens. When you provide liquidity, you normally receive some reward in terms of like the fees that people are charged from swapping their tokens, etc. So in this case, I have received a reward. Now, let's just assume there was a scenario where you provide liquidity and you don't receive a reward. So therefore, you are still exposed to impermanent loss. You would be losing more money. So this is the scenario that they compare. They say that your impermanent loss is 7.94%. So that 7.94% is comparing if you didn't farm versus the fact that you did farm. Now, since you are actually farming, you do receive rewards and that's your incentive for providing liquidity and that's why you are attracted to the farm in the first place. Now with those rewards, it would then put me in a position where I am now making $399. How did I calculate that? Well, I calculated my dino combination of strategies. So I compared my dino farm with the pooled, the rewards I have in the pool, as well as the tokens that I did put across to BP Finance. And that is how much I would have right now. So I am still technically losing from my $500. However, I am gaining by providing liquidity, because if I just bought Dino and I didn't do any farming, then I would be losing even more. But the fact that I've bought Dino, I'm already in this position where I'm exposing myself to the risk of the price of the asset going down. I'm also exposing myself to the reward of the price of the asset going up. Oh, I just realized some of my numbers were wrong. So first and foremost, there's that. How much Dino I have right now is not 27, I think it's more. 37. 37.260. All right. So, yeah. So, with the rewards, it's 413. So, I am still losing from my original $500. In total, I am at 488. So, I am still losing altogether. So, this is dong dong, actually. <laughs> I somehow I thought I was up partially, but then dong. So, because I'm also receiving rewards, I am technically up. And that's why at the start of this video, I said I am up. Um, so if I stay in the farm longer and the price of Dino does not decrease, so let's say I stayed in the farm for another two weeks and the price of Dino does not drop below this, then technically I would have made all my money back. But we're in this business to actually make money, not just to make your money back. So therefore, when it comes to yield farming, these are the risks involved. You have to think about not only the impairment loss, but the fact that the price of the asset could just keep going down. And what if it keeps going down forever? So I hope you learned that you have to pay attention to the price of the asset and you have to, well, the possibility of the price of the asset going down and the impairment loss as a result of that and how that compares to what APR you receive. You know, when you go into these farms and they tell you that you're going to receive 514% or a thousand or six thousand it doesn't last forever and that's the thing that lures you in to begin with so if you are going to farm and it is your first time farming this is not financial advice this is education and entertainment but i would recommend that you start off in something like a stable coin farm yes the apr is tiny in comparison much better compared to banks but you only expose yourself to besides the smart contract risks and DeFi. There is that. In terms of the price action, you expose yourself to the reward. All you have to worry about is the reward, the reward that you're receiving. The APR could go down or the price of the asset can go down. So that is not too bad in comparison. But now I'll explain to you 
what I think about the diner swap exchange and if there's any potential upside that we can discover here. Is this going to be a win? Now let's discuss the actual diner token. So this dino token, as far as I understand, it has unlimited supply. The project so far has been going well. The team has been executing on time. Is this a long-term hold for me? No, it is not. However, let's just do some comparison. We know that dino swap is essentially the pancake swap on the Polygon blockchain. The dino token of itself doesn't really have any utility per se. However, you are incentivized with these pools. If you hold this dino token, it's like you have a key and this key unlocks the opportunity to earn other assets. So let's say you have $100 in dino token and you keep earning from different pools and you keep making back that $100 over and over and over again, depending on the APR, of course, right? So it unlocks your ability to earn various assets. Now, these assets that they add here obviously depends on the projects, whether you like them or not. But even if you don't like the projects, the fact that the APR is that high, potentially it could be a good idea to buy some and, you know, do whatever you want to do with it, trade it, etc. So that's one thing I would say. The second thing I would say is that when you look at the market cap of the Dyna token and you look at the circulating supply, we should compare that to PancakeSwap just to get a rough idea to see what potential is out there. Again, I stress this is not financial advice. This is entertainment. This is not even education at this point. This is entertainment. So the circulating supply of the cake token is 208 million. So that's 208 million. And then the circulating supply of Dino is 15 million. So it's 15.5 actually. What was the other one? 208.2, 15.5. So 208.2 divided by 15.5 is a 13 times multiplier. So we have 13 times more coins, cake coins in circulation than the Dino swap. So since it's a 13 time multiplier, then what market cap would pancake swap be at if it had the same circulating supply as Dino? So since this is 13 times larger, I'm going to divide the market cap by that 13 so I can get a rough idea for how much that would be. So it's 4.2 billion. So the multiply is 13.43. Gonna just keep that number in my head. So 4219 divided by 13.43 is 313 million. So based on the based on like the performance of pancake swap, if the circulating supply was the same of Dino, then the market cap of that token would be 314 million. As we can see, the market cap of Dino swap is nowhere near that. It's 22 million. So let's just see now how much Dino swap can grow. So 313 divided by was it 22? Yeah, 22 is now 14. So Based on that, if for some reason we get the same type of action with um, Dinosaur, then we know that Dinosaur right now is 14 times less valuable in terms of market cap when, it com when it's compared to PancakeSwap. So if I were to multiply the price of the Dino token by 14, then that would mean the price can go to $20. Will that happen in this cycle? Maybe, but also maybe not. Like personally, I think that is like a super bullish estimate. I wouldn't average that I would go that high, but I'm still showing you the potential. Pancake Swap is definitely an old and older project. It's been around for a year, I believe. It's funded by the Binance Smart Chain, I believe. Um, I'm obviously not Googling this stuff before I'm talking to you right now. I'm just like chilling with you right now. So it's been around for roughly a year. So it definitely has, it's more well known. You know, it has way more projects on there that you can earn by having a cake token. But I'm still just giving you a rough example of given the type of project that DinoSwap is, it is a yield farm primarily, it's also an exchange. It can generate revenue from its exchange as well, which could make it more valuable for some investors. But it is a project that is very similar to PancakeSwap, but in a different ecosystem, in a different network altogether. So as long as things on Polygon go well, <laughs> you know, as long as people get, you know, as long as Dinosaur gets more publicity, then potentially people might look into this token. Now, it depends on the macroeconomic factors as well. If people are feeling a bit risk averse, they will not go into farms like these. So like I said, this is definitely not a long-term hold. It's not something I plan to be long in. I do want to make my money back because as you can see, 
technically I'm still losing $12. So I need to get that money back. This is all for experimentation purposes. So I can show you, I'm sorry, my documentation wasn't a hundred percent east from the beginning. So it isn't as controlled as I'd like it to be, but this is what we have. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something today. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. I have various links to connect with me as well in my description. So see you in the next one.